a well-known director recently said that the um, that the truly transgressive thing in our era is to be optimistic, mm -hmm. because we are in an era of divisiveness, of pessimism, of dark behavior, and um, and our film doesn't, you know, it's it's not uh, saccharine. It's there are some very tense moments, and we don't shy away from those things, and that was very important to us. Mm -hmm. Um, not to depict the world as everyone kind of wants it to be in their corner, mm -hmm. but to depict it as it is and let people come together. Exactly. And, um, and for that reason, we were told, I mean, there's a series of, we were told uh, that our film was unproducible. Mm -hmm. This is the point at which, you know, we were dropped and everyone ghosted us, which is such a lovely thing people do in this business. Like yeah. you call and they don't call back or, you know, it's so unprofessional, honestly. Yeah. And, um, and then uh, we were told that we were uh, unmarketable, undistributable, unreleasable, that we would never get into Sundance because we weren't PC enough. Right. People who are part of the film were like, that's just not going to happen. And Kim Yutani said it was her favorite film of Sundance. And then, um, and then we were told we would never get into Cannes. Okay. And we were told it was the only time once we got into Cannes that a film had been unanimously chosen by the jury. So, um, thank you. And then when it came time to get a US distributor, we got Wild Bunch, which is the premier international distributor, and they love the film, they're amazing. They adore it, they get it. And they're, they've been incredible champions of the film. US distributors, we had all the big guys, you know, circling, and you know, most of them are guys. And, um, and they were like, oh yeah, we just they'd say to me, I, we don't know how to market this film. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was, there was a clear code, like we, you know, and what I always say is if we had plunked Jennifer Lawrence in a wheelchair and had to pretend to be disabled, we would have had like an $11 million deal out of Sundance. And we didn't do that. And it made me really, uh, it made me angry, but you know, I don't usually get too angry. I just, am like, okay, I get very activated. So I'm like, all right. So we're going to get distribution and we're gonna get the film out there. Yep. And the thing we found is that audiences are crazy about the movie yeah. and people love it and they're, what happens in any industry is there's a group of people who are telling us all what we can do and can't do and what we should see and shouldn't see or can and can't see. And I, when I saw at Sundance, you know, like these really like certain misogynistic films or films that are really ruthless or, you know, getting picked up and getting big deals because they're violent or because they're genre or because they know they'll sell. Mm -hmm. And there's that reinforcement of certain mores. It's, it's very frustrating and you have to battle it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my latest little battle. <laughs> I knew once I read the script and had plenty of talks with Alice and Kirio, um, our director, about who Tracy was and how important it was for them to actually cast a young black woman in a wheelchair who actually is disabled playing a role of a character that has a disability and how they wanted to keep that authentic. I knew I had to be a part of the project and I was just gonna figure out how to act along the way. Well, um, I was actually diagnosed with ALS when I was 14. Um, and as time goes on, my body did start to have some changes as far as muscle weakness and muscle and losing muscle mass. Um, but at 14, I had no idea what that was. I, there's nobody in my family with a disability or any type of chronic illness or disease. So when I was told, I was kind of like, okay, cause I'm 14 and I don't know any better. <laughs> and then when I started doing research online, you know, in the AOL days, um, <laughs> in the dial-up days, I, uh, I started uh, looking up like uh, symptoms and statistics of uh, patients with ALS, and it was uh, daunting, truthfully, uh, but I had made the decision like that wasn't gonna be my life. I just knew something, I didn't know how powerful that decision would be until later on in life about learning about, you know, energies and you put out what you get, that whole thing. Um, but, I just knew because in my head I was like, I still gotta go to college and I still have to do this and I still have to do that. So um, I just did it. I think just after making that decision, I went along in life just knowing that I had goals to achieve and I wasn't gonna stop until I got those. I'm just glad that people are starting to 
be made aware of people with disabilities. Because um, even in society, day-to-day -day basis, we feel ignored a lot of the time. So for industries as big as entertainment and beauty to really start to pay attention is really, really helpful. And I think it'll be great, you know, moving forward.